Hello and welcome back to Crazy Hank TV and Classic Cartoon Friday. Today I thought I'd go a different direction instead of a cartoon that I really enjoyed as a kid. I'd talk about one that my children enjoyed when they were a kid, especially my son, who was probably addicted to this show. And I'm talking about the real Ghostbusters cartoon. I believe he has every toy that this show ever produced. In fact, he has a YouTube channel, Geek's Dad Life, and I'll put the link of it in the show notes. You can go watch it. He talks about toys and a lot of Ghostbusters stuff. So anyway, let's get started on fun facts about the real Ghostbusters. The series ran from September 13th, 1986 to October 5th, 1991. It was a spinoff from the, of course, the movie Ghostbusters in 1984. A legal dispute put the real in the real Ghostbusters. When Ghostbusters came out in 1984, there was an animated series back in the 70s uh, by a company called Filmation. It was a live action series called Ghostbusters about a squad of paranormal investigators with their gorilla sidekick. Now, who doesn't have a gorilla for a sidekick? When Filmation president Lou Schilmer confronted Columbia Pictures about the title and the premise similarities, the studio entered into an agreement that paid Filmation for the use of the name. Later, Filmation decided to produce an animated version of their Ghostbusters, which they were well in their legal rights to do. In order to maintain control of the audience, perception of the featured franchise, Columbia pursued their own project. They titled it The Real Ghostbusters as a way to be different from the Filmation version, a move that minimized but probably never eliminated the audience confusion. So there you go. That's why it's called The Real Ghostbusters. I never knew that. And this is crazy. The cartoon turned down Ernie Hudson, who is Winston in Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Uh, may sound like an urban legend, but no, it's true. He was he auditioned for the part. He didn't get it. And Arsenio Hall ended up playing Winston in the first three seasons. Network executives were concerned that Janine's glasses might scare children. Because, you know, children can't handle strange-looking glasses. But yeah, that was a big concern. Uh, she had sharp glasses and kids are frightened by sharp objects, so <laughs> let's make them round. <laughs> I don't know growing up if I was ever, ever afraid of somebody's glasses, but uh, yeah, executives were afraid of it and they, well, executives thought that kids would be afraid, so they changed the glasses from pointy to round. The show almost can Ray. How do you cancel Ray? I mean, how do you get rid of Ray? In addition to expressing concerns over Janine, ABC had other suggestions for changes in the series. They recommended the character Ray, played by Dan Aykroyd in the films, because he didn't appear to serve any benefit in, in the program. So the showrunners laughed off the suggestion. What? Come on. How do you get rid of Ray? The Egon actor was told not to do Hell Ramis' impression, but got the job anyway. Veteran voiceover actor Maurice Lemoshaw, I hope I'm saying that correctly, was one of several performers to audition for the series. When he arrived, he was told by producers, don't do Harold Ramis, who played Spangler in the films. Uh, Lamarche couldn't think of another approach, wound up doing Ramis in the audition. He left thinking he had bombed, but he was hired for the role after Gross told him they probably needed at least one actor to sound like someone from the movies. The voice of Peter Beckman got replaced for not sounding enough like Bill Murray. <laughs> Despite the game plan to keep the cartoon voices separate, from the featured film actors, they were continued concerns that the show performers weren't enough like the movie counterparts. So, <laughs> Lorenzo Music, who was the voice of Garfield, was replaced halfway through the show run when Bill Murray commented to film director Ivan Reitman that Music didn't sound anything like him. Murray wasn't looking to get Music replaced, but that edit came down regardless. Full House star Dave Corlay stepped in as Beckman. It was retitled Slimer, and the real Ghostbusters. Owing to the popularity of the sidekick Slimer, the green ghoul who roams the fire station that doubles as Ghostbuster headquarters, the show was renamed Slimer and the real Ghostbusters in 1988. So there you go. That's how, that's how Slimer made it to the big times. There was a spinoff. The real Ghostbusters stopped production in 1991, two years after Ghostbusters 2 left the theater. With a third movie seemingly grounded, Columbia has decided to try and keep the franchise fortunes flowing with Extreme Ghostbusters, a 40-episode series, a direct continuation of the first animated series in Extreme Ghostbusters, Egon leaves the team of investigators. I gotta be honest, when I first, my son first started watching Ghostbusters, I go, really, this is a cartoon that people are going to watch? I would have said, no, this won't make it. But people still talk about it today. I know 
the kids from that generation, my son's generation and my daughter's, they love the real Ghostbusters. They're fans of the movie and the cartoons. So, and of course, the tons of money they made on the merchandise. So there you go. There's some fun facts about the real Ghostbuster cartoon. We'll be back next week with a different cartoon. Thanks for watching. Tell a friend, share the video, all that fun stuff. Like it. I'm out. Bye, guys.